Sup nerd amigos, I'm the disembodied voice of the Jive Talking Nerd, John Norgrove. We've got Wife here. We are here for the first Mirkvidheim vlog of 2021. So, the hill that we live on, the mountain that we live on up here, um, all the houses are named, and so we've been trying to name our house for like a couple of years now. And we couldn't really think of anything that was like that the yeah. name. You know, so we, um, we were playing around with some stuff the other day, and we decided to name our house Merkvidheim, which would be the home of the dark woods. Yeah. Um, so obviously, I loved it because Merkwood uh, <laughs> and Lord of the Rings, uh, Tolkien stuff, and it's also like what Old Norse. Yeah, it's a, yeah. it's an old it's an Old Norse way of naming things because we live in a house underneath all these giant redwood trees. And as an avid gardener, let me tell you what: there's just not enough light. <laughs> um. <laughs> that is super true. It is way darker it is and super true. Out of here than there you is expect. like one hole in the forest, and it's directly above our house. Yeah, because you can't have a tree in the middle of the house. The of the house. Although it looks like they did way back when. <laughs> yeah. So Anywho. that's a long Anywho. way of us saying welcome to the new uh, vlog that we do. So yeah. you're watching this on uh, a Monday. This will be on a Monday. Yeah. And uh, it, these will be coming out every other Monday. So mm -hmm. uh, you come back on Monday. This Monday you're watching us. Next Monday is going to be us and for our uh, Horn and Cauldron podcast, yep. available on all your podcasting channels. Um, and uh, then back to Merkvidheim Vlogs. That's right. So let's... We're going to start this Let's off with a cooking recipe. Now, this is special because I've never made this before. I've eaten it many, many times. So, uh, John got me a really nice, beautiful uh, fermentation crock for Christmas. And uh, I'm going to make kimchi. Uh, and I've never done that before. But I make lots of sauerkraut. So, I understand how fermentation science works and I understand how sauerkraut works, but uh, this will be a first. So, I'm following the recipe from Mangchi, uh, and that's spelled M-A-A-N-G-C-H-I. Sorry if I spelled that wrong. I actually don't really know Korean, so I did my best. Um, so, you can just find this um, recipe on uh, on that website. Uh, and this is what's called pogi we'll, we'll, we'll have it. We'll have the, we'll have the recipe linked yeah, in, yeah, the, yeah. in the doobly do below. Yeah. yeah, don't worry about so that. So, this is what's called pogi kimchi, which uh, essentially from my research means that it's whole head cabbage kimchi as opposed to cutting it in little squares and then shoving that in a jar. We're going to do this the hard way because uh, that's how we do. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm so and don't forget the main ingredient in any cooking, the drinking, the booze, the booze, the booze. <laughs> So I've got all of my supplies out here and ready. We've got our two heads of uh, Napa cabbage, which is about six pounds. Um, there, these are like surprisingly not heavy for someone that's used to working with um, just like a standard round head of cabbage. It's actually called Savoy cabbage. They're very dense and very heavy, and this feels like way lighter, so that's kind of dope. So I've got everything else here ready to go. We got our fermentation crock. It's been cleaned and sanitized. Uh, we've got our um, our red pepper flakes, and it says that you need uh, gochugaru red pepper flakes, but I didn't have those, but I did have Thai uh, red peppers dried as well as chipotle. So this is kind of like a sweet chipotle thing. I know it's not traditional. This is what I had. <laughs> yeah, double secret over time. Uh, sometimes you don't have an ingredient and- uh, And you just gotta make it up. You, you, gotta, you gotta just go with your brains here yep. and uh, mix and match. Yep, and we're trying to not leave the house as much as possible for Reasons. Uh, next is in this little guy is sweet rice flour and it said turbinado sugar, but I don't have that. So I substituted with um, a, a tablespoon and a half of regular sugar and a half a tablespoon of brown sugar. So this is going to get boiled uh, later on and turn into like a porridge. So that's just kind of hanging out. Next, we've got some matchstick vegetables. This is daikon radish and carrot and uh, green onions. And then over here, we have what's going to be our sauce. So right now, this is just um, fish sauce and a medium onion and garlic and ginger. That's been a uh, word in this dope little worry thing that we have. Uh, and you also are supposed to put fermented salted shrimp in this, but I didn't have any of that. So 
Um, it's gonna go with just fish sauce and a splash of soy sauce and uh, I added like a little bit of sea salt to make sure that our salt ratios are important. So one of the things about fermentation is you need to make sure there is enough salt to make sure the bad stuff doesn't grow in there or at least as best as you can. Get the bad stuff out of the regular stuff. Yeah, no bad stuff zone. So the first step um, is to split the cabbage in half without shredding the leaves inside. And it wants me to cut a short slit in the base of the cabbage and then like rip it open. <laughs> and this is a... Um, What's up, work from the butt? Yeah, this is something that I haven't done. This stuff is like surprisingly easy to like cut through. It, it, I, it's kind of like cutting through like... Why do they think that you ripping it open would do less damage than just cutting it? I don't know. Look at that! Well, maybe because that's actually the easier way wow, to do it. Wow, that was super easy. I'm really surprised. Mm. Uh, so now um, what I need to do is uh, put this into this area here. I don't put it into the thing yet. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to do it with the other one. That was surprisingly easy to that was do. A, that was one time, though. We'll see. We'll see yeah, how we'll it... see if I can do it the second time around. This is, this is like, new to me. Let's... Let's get the money shot on this. That's not appropriate. Yeah. This is not appropriate. Damn, dude. Dude. And you're only doing them in half, you're not doing them in quarters? Uh, and then it wants you to actually do like a like a slice here, mm -hmm. uh, which is like into the core a little bit. You can see that I'm slicing like here into the core. I don't want to actually cut it in half again until after they've uh, been salted for a while. So I'm just going to make a nice little slit and another one over here. I keep thinking that this is like a heavier cabbage and wanting to like really like go like hardcore on the slicing and then I realize, oh, it's just styrofoam. Never mind. Yeah. Try not to cut my <laughs> Yeah, right? Okay, so don't, now... Don't judge the shaking camera. The tripod was caught on my sarong. <laughs> so uh, now we've got our cool little halves. I had never thought about, like, ri just ripping this open, but this worked, like, super easy. Yeah. It's, it's kind of... It's vaguely beautiful. Uh, yeah, it is, actually. And that was very, like, satisfying. So next, I have to dunk these into... You know, like oddly satisfying videos, you know? R slash oddly satisfying. Yeah. I have to dunk these into a big old basin of water, um, which is my cheese pot. And you want to do this to like get them wet. But you also kind of want to like shake them around a little bit so that there's any dirt. It kind of like yeah. falls out. But I don't want to be too rough with it because you want to keep all these leaves attached as best as you can. All right. So... Next, we're going to go ahead and salt these. So, like, when you're doing sauerkraut, you have, like, your cabbage all chopped up super fine, and then you just, like, crunch it with salt water. And the water that's in the cabbage, like, comes out, and you use that as your juice. But with this one, we don't actually do that. So I have to take this salt. This is a half a cup of just regular salt. And then I have to, like, salt each of these and it says to make sure that your leaves stay together so that's gonna be the hard part and you want to just like have this salt on like the whole thing but more towards the base because it's thicker than towards the leaves and what you're kind of trying to do with drawing this out is pretty similar to when you make like traditional sauerkraut where you're using the salt to get the water out of the cabbage so that you can kind of like move forward but it looks like this is taking it a step further and is like preserving it a little bit as well so we're just gonna that's too much and what size handful of this uh salt are you shows so okay so you're not just you're like not a, a ton yeah this two this half a cup of salt has to go through all of these halves so I'm not being like, uh, you know, I'm putting enough in there, but not a whole lot. So it's just kind of like I put it on my hand and then you can see I'm kind of like, you know, rubbing it out there. Like, rubbing it out there. <laughs> that was real bad. Rubbing it out there. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry, parents with children. Yeah. Uh, you shouldn't be watching this anyway. Uh, and then yeah. I'm just kind of like Holy wiping shit. it off 
on these leaves. Hey, man, sometimes you gotta wipe it off on leaves, dog. Yeah, forest I mean, if you're style. in the forest, you gotta yeah. do what you uh, gotta do. We don't have leaves in our forest. Yeah, we have, we have like we have needles. needles. Yeah, we're a needle yeah, forest. Yeah, so this one is ready to go. And I'm just gonna like temporarily put this over here um, so that I can keep moving. And I've got these like shreds here. I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do with those. Uh, uh, but there is a lot of water on this. <laughs> so I'm just gonna like. Whoop. Yeah. All right. Because you got to pull all four of those out, do the same thing, yep. and then dump the water out and put them in that pan? Yep. Okay. And we're just going to keep going. Records yeah. backwards or whatever the fuck it is, and it has some demon message bullshit. I don't know. I don't even know if any of that's fucking true, by the by. I don't either. Like, I, feel I feel like, like it's, it's one of those things that's joke. actually fake. Yeah. Yeah. If you like, know about some records that you can play back asswards or some shit, and you get some demon messages or slower or faster or whatever, you fucking let me know. I have a record player and a pretty astute record collection, and I'm always willing to buy some more. So. <laughs> So, and that's, that's one of those things that you need to, you, like, the recipe may say that you need whatever amount, volume of salt, a cup of salt, or whatever the fuck, but, like, I mean, you know, if you, if you need a little bit more, you need a little bit fucking more. Yeah, and if you need a little bit less, you need a little bit less. Yeah, like that, like, it is sort of what it is. So now that she's salted all of the cabbage, you're gonna pour the water out of your cabbage retaining vessel. Yep. Right, you just leave that there. Pour the water out of your cabbage retaining vessel. And uh, you're just using your cheese pot, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, and we have a yeah, bowl this is, uh... that's big enough, but it's, um, well, it's probably... Uh, we have a bowl that might be big enough. Yeah. But it, um, it has lemons in it right now, so we don't want to use that. <laughs> it's also not big enough for all of this. Yeah. So we're just going to leave these cabbages, Stand like... Them up. Oh, that's a good idea. Stand them up so that way when you flip them, you're getting like the top half and the bottom half with any of the like sweat drippings. Ah! All right. We're yeah. Stand them up for a prettier presentation. <laughs> okay. So. Okay. So we're gonna. Stand those up. Yeah. So right these now. are actually gonna rest like how they are, and we want to um, turn them over every thirty minutes so they get well salted. So the first time they're gonna be up here, and then we're gonna turn them so that they're upside down, and then we'll probably lay them flat, and then turn them over again. So uh, we'll see you in two hours. All right. See you. All right, welcome back. The cabbages have been uh, chilling for a couple of hours, and the next step is to uh, rinse them out uh, and then let them drain while we do a few other things. So I'm actually just gonna take these out here and put them on here. You can see how like floppy they've gotten. That's the salt doing its thing. And uh, we actually ended up with like a lot of salt water too. This is all of the water that came out of the cabbages. So there's quite a bit there. So we're gonna hang on to that. That's gonna be like reserved while we do the next piece. So now we are going to rinse these guys. 
under salt water. And while we're doing that, we're actually gonna now split these by tearing them in half again. <laughs> That's probably the most fun of this. So uh, we are rinsing these under cold water so that we can get any addition, any like residual dirt or salt off of them because we don't want these to be like super salted going in. And then we're just gonna lay them in here so that they drain. These guys are doing their thing. I'm actually gonna kind of set them so that they're sort of facing down so that they drain a little better. And give them a good shake. All right, so we're gonna let these guys drain for a little bit. And in the meantime, we're gonna work on a different piece. So while those were doing their thing, we made a rice porridge with that rice flour and sugar. So we cooked that for 10 minutes and then uh, at medium heat and then let this cool all the way down to room temperature. So it's kind of like a, a paste of sorts. And what we're going to do next is we're going to just add the rest of our bits. So first we're gonna go ahead and add in our, our uh, pepper flakes. Uh, so this is again, uh, ground Thai peppers and chipotle powder. There's two cups of this. And this is what gives kimchi its red color. I'm technically you're supposed to use uh, gochugaru um, pepper flakes, but I didn't have those. So we're doing this. So it smells like nice and smoky. And we want these to kind of like rehydrate in this powder. So that's why we're doing this first. And next we are going to add uh, the rest of our seasoning paste. So this is the minced garlic and ginger and onion that we talked about earlier. That's also been mixed with a bit of fish sauce and uh, regular uh, sea salt because I didn't have enough. Uh, or I didn't have any of those uh, shrimpies. All right, so this is all mixed together and this smells, this smells fantastic, guys. Like super good. All right, now we've got our paste. Wine break. Wine break. And we're now gonna add our matchstick to vegetables to this. So this is daikon radish and carrot and green onions. And now all this stuff gets mixed together too. So we want this to be all thoroughly mixed because the next step is going to be to put this onto the cabbage quarters and then they get sort of like rolled up and then placed in the fermentation crock. All right, so we're gonna put that right there and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna cut this core, you can see there's little pieces of core left here. So we're just gonna cut that core mostly off because it's just like a hard bit and it's gonna be really weird to eat when you um, when you have this out as kimchi. Show me the bit that you just cut off on the, on the, on the thing. Yeah, because you're moving around too much, too fast for the camera oh, to sorry. autofocus. Remember, robots are weaker than we are. <laughs> They don't want you to know it, guys, but robots are fucking <laughs> little bitches. Now, as we're going along, we're going to be putting things into the fermentation crock. Into the crock. 
into Zikrak. Look into its eyes. It's too dark. The camera doesn't understand what's going on. <laughs> okay, I'm going to rearrange this so that I have a little bit more room here. Until the camera has a better angle. Let's be honest. Uh -huh. Until the camera has a better angle, everybody. Don't listen to it. Yep. Come on. Get out All of right. Way. So Jesus. we're going to take this paste and we're just going to like grab it and just like smear it up in here. And then we're going to fold these leaves down to kind of like the next portion here. You can see here's the next layer. And we're going to do the same thing. It's probably a little much. And then we're just going to keep going. All right, so now that this is like this, we're gonna just kind of like fold it in on itself. And then this is gonna go directly in the bottom. And we're gonna take those goodies and put them in there too. Okay. And then we move on to First the next. Pile of shit in there. Yeah, first pile of stuff. Your fucking butt. So we wanted to flip it so that they kind of sit in there and they just kind of like rest against each other. They nest, yeah. Yeah. It does not want to focus on this, ladies and germs. So... Deal with that shit, I guess. Use your imagination. Yeah. I'll get a picture or something. We're gonna get all the rest of this stuff on top and all the rest of this stuff from the cutting board in there also. And we're gonna push this down as much as we can. We really don't want a whole bunch of air bubbles trapped in there like as much as possible but this will weep, so it will get more compressed. Yeah, not only will it compress, take out this new fuck. Uh, not only will it compress, but it'll also sort of make it so it might look good. Yeah. All right, now the next step is gonna be to clean this bad boy out here. Get into a fresh paper towel and do it again. <laughs> She's learning about the necessitations for cleanliness it's and fermentation you, science. It? Uh, well, you know, every single every single speck is a mistake. Is everything, that what they say? Everything you do should be emotion and perfection, and actually, it doesn't really fucking matter. But you know, make it clean, make it nice, take care of what you're doing. Yeah. They say cleanliness is next to godliness, and that's just. <laughs> it's just the fun. It's in the same. So. Okay, so now that that's all clean, what we're going to be doing is taking just a little bit of water and pouring this in. This is called the gutter 
on a fermentation crock. And this is going to help it to ferment, but without getting a whole bunch of like bugs and nasties in it. So it is an old school airlock. And you just do you put... need to put the stones on top of that? Do you want oh, I do. Pressure? Yeah, I should put the there stones on top. So if you do home brewing, you're used to the little curly Q thing or the like upside down bucket inside of another bucket that's clear. These are fermentation weights. I don't know if these are going to fit. This is up so high. Well, if you have to weigh or just put, can you just put one in? No, I don't think I can. Don't push that hard. Yeah, I can't. Okay. And those will just not have to be clean. comfortably. It's not, it's not time for fermentation stones yet. So we'll just check it in a couple of days or yep. whatever. So this is going to stay out on the counter and allow this will allow air to escape you can see that the water is in there and when the fermentation happens and there's like an air bubble this is just going to sort of plop and then just like that you'll yeah. see an air bubble it's come actually out. like floating a little yeah yeah you know it's sort of like a mercury ring in a uh, mm -hmm. in a lighthouse frenzel lens assembly yeah uh, and if you don't know how that works do some fucking research because <laughs> that's what we did because we watched one movie about lighthouses <laughs> Literally. Yeah. All right. So uh, the this is gonna sit on the counter for oh, you're at least a few days. Damn, there we go. Uh, and then uh, once it reaches a desirable level of fermentation, I'm gonna jar it up and put it into the fridge. Yeah. So uh, after about a day or so, the cabbage is gonna release a whole lot more liquid and I'm gonna be able to push it down because it'll be that much more floppy yeah. and then I'll be able to put those fermentation weights on there. With a traditional sauerkraut, you usually wait a full two weeks on the counter, but with kimchi, you really are doing it based on your taste preference. So um, I don't know how long this is gonna sit on the counter yet. We're just gonna kind of take it as it comes. Uh, apparently you can eat it right away, which sounds interesting, but I think I'm gonna skip that for now. So, this has been kimchi. This has been kimchi. This I've been wife. That's true. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Either way. Either way. Uh, uh, Stay no. tuned for the next Mercvidein blog. Yeah. And we'll be seeing you soon. Yeah. Don't forget to like this video, comment below, share, subscribe, do all Ring that. Ring the kind bell. Of stuff. And uh, yeah, we'll um, you'll you'll get more. You'll get more stuff. Don't worry. That's right. All right. See you.